Welcome to Wednesday. It's the sixth day of April 2022. Your day with the podcast brought to you by Cowboy State Daily. Check them out at CowboyStateDaily.com or on their Facebook page. Well, folks, we've got a lot to talk about. First of all, we haven't done this in a while. It's the weather song of the day. Now, a lot of folks will remember this one from the association. Everyone knows it's windy. So, boy, there's a throwback. But I think that song is quite appropriate to what's going on right now. We like to call it a wind festival when we get into this multiple day event where we just have the winds continuing and continuing. This is what made home setters go Well, stir crazy when these winds would just continue. And that's kind of what's going to be driving everybody crazy along and east of the Continental Divide here for another couple of days. So the wind festival continues, high winds. This is going to be really true east of the Continental Divide. For you folks west of the Divide, the wind isn't going to be nearly as bad today. But you get east of the Divide, the wind's going to go on for another two days. Wraparound snows, as we talked about yesterday, will continue. Moving into the Black Hills, so the Black Hills of Wyoming, South Dakota, Southeast Montana, far northeastern Wyoming, you're going to get a little bit of snow and a lot of wind with that today. Kind of a little mini weather system up there. We're going to break the weather Friday and Saturday. Now, Friday, it's still going to be breezy in some areas, but it's going to warm up. Today and tomorrow are going to be chilly, but Friday and Saturday, we're going to have a nice little rebound. Friday and Saturday is going to feel a little bit like spring again, but it's short-lived. As early as late Saturday night into Sunday, we're going to see rain showers, snow showers, and even thunderstorms move into the Pacific Northwest and the northern and central Rockies as we start to see the development of a large and slow-moving trough that's going to start to form this weekend, then mature as we get into the early to middle parts of next week. So we're still watching the potential for a developing storm system early to mid next week in this region that could be impactful. It's still too far out to be 100% sure. But as we've been discussing over the last couple of days, livestock interest and travelers need to monitor the weather as we get into the early to middle parts of next week, as the return of a winter pattern could really develop if all the stars line up. And that's something that we've got to keep an eye on. Here is the low. Look at that beautiful curl. The counterclockwise spin showing that beautiful spin that you get with the low pressure systems when they blow up like this east of the divide. So we're going to have severe weather and strong thunderstorms and rain out here in the eastern United States. Rain and snow into the Great Lakes and rain and thunder in the middle parts of the Corn Belt there. Then on the back side of this, this is going to be a snow event for Minnesota, the eastern Dakotas, even into northern Iowa. And then you see this area right here. This is another wave of moisture and strong northerly winds that's headed this way. That's why the counterclockwise spin is going to drag this cloudiness. And this is why the uh, moisture that's going to be coming into the Black Hills will move on in. Also, I would not be surprised if this area here experiences some snow flurries and snow showers later today as this spoke of energy and moisture right here spins in behind that storm and heads south into the region. And here you can see it on the 500 millibar chart, that low centered right there. And here's that spoke of energy and moisture that's going to drop south into eastern Montana, northeastern Wyoming later today and tonight, while high pressure builds along the west coast. Here are the wind forecast gusts, and again, these are conservative, over the next 48 hours. So you can see really a strong denaliation between the high winds east of the divide and the lighter winds west of the continental divide. So this is the area that will really be plagued by these strong northwest winds all in Nebraska, all of South Dakota, all of Kansas, all of eastern Colorado, all of eastern Wyoming. It's just going to howl for another 48 hours, I'm afraid to say. And here's the moisture coming in on that spoke. So this is an area here that's going to have wind blowing snow and accumulating snow. A little more snow coming for the bighorns. And here are the snow showers and flurries that may develop today on the back side of the system for parts of eastern Wyoming and western Nebraska. But this is where the heavier moisture is going to be into those areas. This is what the snowfall looks like. So you can see the northern Black Hills there are going to get several inches of snow out of this. As we go ahead into tomorrow and Friday, this is by noon Friday. The upper level low is a slow, slow mover. That's why the winds are going to be persistent even into the day Friday on the back side of the storm. So there'll be a variety of weather from thunderstorms and rain and snow 
into the Great Lakes and into the middle part of the United States. Then here is the next developing troublemaker for the western United States. This system right here combined with a building ridge of high pressure will start to carve out a trough of low pressure in the western United States. This is by Saturday evening. We have a push of a cold front in a trough coming in. So Washington, Oregon, Idaho, Montana, western Wyoming, you're going to see rain showers, snow showers, and I even see the risk of thunderstorms. You see right here the blue and the green. This shows the potential. Basically, it's what it's doing is forecasting where thunderstorms might develop and where lightning strikes could occur. So by Saturday afternoon, there could be some April showers and thunderstorms developing all the way back even into the Pacific Northwest, even over the Sierra Nevada. And then you can see here are the showers. This is by Sunday afternoon. You can see some showers and thunderstorms, nothing really heavy, but it starts this trough as it starts to dig in is going to produce a little bit of weather this weekend. This is a band of showers and isolated thunderstorms that could develop Sunday afternoon and also Saturday afternoon a little bit further south. Then as we get into noon Monday, we have a low beginning to push into southwestern Idaho towards Utah. As the storm settles into Idaho and into the Great Basin states to the south, notice, and we showed you this earlier, where you get this high pressure ridge in the southeast, you get the high pressure ridge that is into the Gulf of Alaska, and basically what you do is you end up holding the trough of low pressure in the west for multiple days in a row. Now this is something this winter we only saw once, and that was when we had that big period of colder wet weather in December, where all of a sudden we saw the snow really go up in the mountains, we saw snow on the plains, and we saw precipitation pick up for about a two week period. This is somewhat similar where a, a system is gonna maybe hang around for multiple days instead of what we've seen lately, really since March and going back to February even, systems come in and they're gone. And when that happens, you just don't have an opportunity to get good precipitation. But as you can see, this is by noon Monday and this is by noon Wednesday. What we are having is a, basically a double barreled system. We have a low break off and get better organized over southeastern Colorado. It takes what we call a negative tilt, which causes a really rapid intensification of a low pressure system. And then another system that wants to come in behind it. And what this will do is produce areas of rain, snow, and it's going to bring in much colder temperature readings. And that's one thing we got to watch is, is that with the system, and this is all the way to next Friday, with another low sliding in behind it coming in late next week and towards next weekend, next week could be cold. These are the temperature anomalies for next Friday. So this is Friday the 15th of April. See that area of purple right there and all the green and the blue? So this could really be a change to a colder, wetter pattern. Double-edged sword, we need the wet. But it's gonna be a situation where I think stock growers and travelers are gonna be impacted by the storm. But we have a lot of details to sort out before we really can nail down where exactly the storm will track, where the biggest impacts will be. Stay tuned, we'll keep you updated. In the meantime, try not to go crazy in the